What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how we can actually graph the data from cryptocurrencies. And this works for any cryptocurrency on the market. It can go for as far as you want it to go, which means we can get the five year data, the one year data, one month data, one day data. But let's go ahead and run the program so you can see exactly what I mean by that. So as you can see right now, we have the full graph for the entire history of Bitcoin. And if we expand it, you'll see that we'll get more details and it just graphs out all the way until today, how Bitcoin rose and how we missed this beautiful opportunity to make 50,000 euros. And it also graphs it down here with pandas. So it's gonna be a very simple program that gives us a lot of information that we can later use to analyze and to make some predictions. And also I want to show you that this is highly customizable so we can definitely go and insert an amount of days such as the past 30 days. And if we click on run, you'll notice we'll get a graph for Bitcoin for the past 30 days. And this works for any currency as usual. We can also change it to Ripple. We can change the days to one and we can change the interval to an hourly interval. And you'll notice that this is the history of the Ripple for the past 24 hours. And also, if you have a preferred currency such as USD, the Euro, the British Pound or whatever, you can specify that as well. Let's change this to Ethereum just to change things up. Change the days to three and take away the interval. Now you'll notice that we'll get the price of Ethereum for the past three days. As you can see right here, we get the timestamp plus we get the date of when this was retrieved. And these are in USD. And that's what we'll be making in this tutorial. So the first thing we have to do is go ahead and create a new Python project. And once we are here, we just have to go ahead and first create a main Python file. So we're just gonna go ahead and type in main. And we're not going to need any API keys for this because we're going to be using CoinGecko, which is a free API for cryptocurrencies and it is wonderful. So we'll just be using that. But what we do have to do is go to our terminal and first start by installing requests. Then we can go ahead and install pandas for the data cleaning. And finally, I'm uncertain whether it installs it with pandas. So we're just gonna go ahead and type in pip install matplotlib. Perfect, so as soon as that has finished, we can go ahead and close this tab and we can start with the imports. So we're gonna start with import requests. Then we're gonna go and import pandas as PD. Then we need to import date time to help with our date and time. And finally, we're going to import matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. And that's just used to graph the data. Now the first function we have to create is a helper function that makes sure the user inserts a real cryptocurrency so the program doesn't crash. And to do that, we're just going to create a function that's called available crypto. And the first thing we have to do inside here is create a URL. And that's going to be a formatted string. Then we're gonna type in HTTPS, double dot, double slash, api.coingecko.com slash API, slash V3, and slash coins. So this API endpoint just shows us all of the available coins that exist in the database, and it will just check whether we have inserted a valid coin. Now we should go ahead and create the response as always, which is going to equal the requests.get, and insert the URL. Then the data is going to equal a response.json. And right below, we're going to create a list, which is going to be called crypto IDs and it's going to be an empty list. Now we're going to check for asset in the data. We want to append to this crypto IDs list the current ID of the loop, because if we just print out this data, we'll get a large list of the available cryptocurrencies, but we want each one of them to be separated and inserted into a list so they can be compared to later. So to do that, we're going to go ahead and type in crypto IDs dot append, and we need to append the asset at the index of ID. And then this function is only going to return all the crypto IDs. And as I recommend in every program, the first thing we should do is go ahead and test whether this function works. Otherwise it's a waste of time, of course. So let's go ahead and just print the available crypto. Then we have to right click on our program and click on run. And as you can see, what we get as a return is a full list of all the cryptocurrencies that are available with this API. And since that works, now we can go ahead and create the function that actually retrieves the data and returns it as a 
chart. So I'm going to add another comment here that says retrieve the chart data for any currency and it returns a data frame. So down here, we're gonna type in definition, get underscore market underscore charts. And the first parameter we have to include is a coin ID, which is going to be a default of Bitcoin. Then we should insert a versus currency, which is the currency you want to convert it into. And for me, I'm just going to default it to Euro. And then we need to pick an amount of days of how many days we want to get the history for. And I'm going to put the default as the maximum amount. So just type in, dot, uh, just type in max. And then we have to specify an interval which is going to be daily. So we're gonna get the daily data and let's fix this typo over here. Now we need to first make the API request to check whether we have the given cryptocurrencies. So to do that, we're just going to create a new variable inside here that says crypto IDs, and that's going to equal our available crypto, which is a list of crypto IDs. Then we're going to create a big if else statement. So here we're gonna go ahead and type in if the coin ID is in the crypto IDs, then it means it is a valid currency and we can move ahead with the program. So here we need to create another URL because we are going to make another API request. And this one's going to be https double dot double slash api.coingecko.com slash api slash version three slash coins slash, and then we have to add a pair of curly brackets. And inside here, we will insert the coin ID we want to convert. And then we have to do market underscore chart. Then below that, we can specify a payload, which helps us with inserting a few query parameters. So let's go ahead and create a map. And the first one we need to create is the versus currency. And that is just going to be the versus currency. Then we are going to create the parameter of days, and that's going to equal our days parameter. And finally, the interval, which is just going to equal the interval parameter. Then we need to get the response. So let's go ahead and type in response. It's going to equal the requests.get, insert the URL and the payload inside the parameters keyword. And the data is going to equal a response.json. Then we have to go ahead and create two different lists. So we're gonna go ahead and call the first one timestamp list. So we know which date we're getting it for and the current price list for each timestamp. And that's going to equal two empty lists. Then we have to go ahead and create a for loop to get each one of the currencies from each one of the timestamps. So we're going to type in for price in the data at the index of prices, we want to get the timestamps and the prices. So timestamp list dot append. And the first one we want to append is the date time dot date time dot from timestamp. And inside here, we need to insert the timestamp, of course, which is going to be the price at the index of zero divided by 1000. And the reason we have to insert this 1000 is because for some strange reason, the timestamp it returns is multiplied by a thousand, which means we end up going about 5,000 years in the future. And I have no idea why this is happening, but I realized a very easy way to fix this is just to divide the current timestamp it has by 1,000. Then we have to go ahead and call our price list and we need to append the price at the index of one because each one of these prices that gets returned from the data at the index of prices returns an array of two items. So the first item is the timestamp and the second item is the price list. And that's why price at the index of zero is a timestamp and price at the index of one is the actual price. Then we have to go ahead and clean the data with pandas. So we're gonna go ahead and create a raw data map. And inside here, the first one we have to provide is a timestamp, which is going to be the timestamp list. And the second one is going to be the price which is going to be equal to the price list. Then we can go ahead and create a data frame, which is going to equal pandas data frame and with the raw data inside of it. Then we will return this data frame so that we can use this entire function to return the data that we have retrieved from this API. And we also want to specify an else statement in case the user picks a currency that does not exist. So to do that, we are going to create a print statement and inside here we will write the crypto you have selected is not available. Please choose one from the following list. And then we can print the crypto IDs to help the user decide which cryptocurrency they want to choose. 
But that takes care of the main function of this program. Now all we have to do is go ahead and get the market info and plot it. So to do this, first we're going to create a variable outside of the program, which is going to be called market info. And that's going to equal get market info for the coin of Bitcoin, which is a default parameter. But the reason I chose it is so I can just show you that we can customize this. And the versus currency is going to be set to USD. We're going to set the days to 30 and we're going to leave the interval at daily so we don't have to do anything. Then we can go ahead and print this market info just to see that everything's working correctly. So as you can see, we just retrieved the data for the past 30 days, starting on the 10th of the third month, all the way to today, which is the 8th at 10.30, which is the current time, I believe. Right now it's 10.35, so not so far off but more or less accurate. And if we remove all of this, you'll notice that we'll get all the data in Euro for Bitcoin for its entire lifespan. So for example, let's go ahead and run the program and you'll see starting at the 28th date of the fourth month in 2013, we had the price of 103 and it gets the data all the way up until today, the 8th, which is set at this price currently. So it gives us a lot of data to work with and it's working perfectly. And also let's go ahead and specify a cryptocurrency that does not exist, such as XXA. And you'll notice that we'll get an error message that says the crypto you have selected is not available. Please choose one from the following list. And then we'll be able to choose one of these other cryptocurrencies. But let's go ahead and finally plot the data. So you have something to look at and something to analyze. So we're gonna go ahead and type in market info dot plot and the Y label is going to be set to price and the X label is going to be set to timestamp. And I'm also going to specify a collar because I like to customize that. And I'm going to insert a blue, which is just this hex code over here because I think it looks a lot nicer. And the final thing we have to do is call matplotlib and type in dot show. Now, if we go ahead and run the program, it's going to give us all the API data and it's going to take me to my home page where we have the chart. So this is the data for the entire lifespan of Bitcoin. Let's pretend we want to specify that we only want the past 365 days. Then all we have to do is type in days and 365. Stop and rerun. And it's gonna give us the aggregated data for the past 365 days. And finally, let's go ahead and go to the past two days, but let's pretend we want the interval to be hourly. We can go ahead and do that and click on save. And it's gonna give us the data for the past two days at an hourly level. So right now we start with the sixth over here at 12 o'clock. And then as you can see, 18 o'clock, midnight, six in the morning, 12, and it does this for the past two days. So you can make this as specific as you want for any of the cryptocurrencies. And in a future video, I'm going to show you how we can analyze this data and make some very basic predictions. But of course, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Otherwise, with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.